Please note that filming text on a whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way, and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. All right, guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. All right, you guys, today we're going to be talking about EAS reactions, and this stands for Electrophilic Aromatic Substitution Reactions. And whoa, that sounds complex, but it's actually a very simple concept. Let me go and break it down for you, okay? So let's start out with the A of EAS, and what does the A stand for? Aromatic. So let's take an aromatic ring, such as benzene. And we're going to throw in this aromatic ring with the E of EAS. What does the E stand for? Electrophilic or electrophile, right? So let's throw in an electrophile, abbreviated E+. Plus. Okay, so you take an electrophile, E, you throw it in with an aromatic ring, A, and you're going to get a substitution reaction happening here. But what's going to be substituted? Well, check this out. We know that there's a hydrogen on each one of these carbons of this benzene ring, right? So let me go and just draw one of those hydrogens, but realize that there's one on every one of those carbons, right? Okay, so we're gonna take our electrophile, throw it in with an aromatic ring, and this is what's going to happen. You're gonna get a substitution reaction where the electrophile is gonna substitute for one of the hydrogens on that benzene ring. So this hydrogen is gonna get substituted out, and we're gonna substitute in our electrophile. And this is all that's happening, you guys. Electrophilic aromatic and we get a substitution reaction where the electrophile substitutes for that hydrogen of the benzene ring and we just chose this one arbitrarily okay but that's all that's happening you're substituting an electrophile for that hydrogen to get an electrophile on your benzene ring on your aromatic ring okay so let's go ahead and write some general information about how this happens All right, so let's talk about benzene here for a minute because benzene is an aromatic ring. And aromatic rings, these are known for being what? Stable or unstable? Stable, right? Aromatic rings actually aren't just stable, they're super stable. They've got that conjugated cyclic flow of electrons with those resonant structures, right? Making them really, really stable. And if you're really, really stable, do you want to react? No, if you're stable, you don't want to react, right? So, hey, what we just saw a minute ago where we took benzene, an aromatic ring, threw it in with an electrophile and got that benzene to react to do a substitution reaction, that should have looked really, really strange. That's unheard of. We've never seen benzene react like that before, right? What's going on here? Benzene is usually too stable to react. Let's go ahead and write this down. All right, so you can go and write this down, that benzene is usually too stable to react. Because if it were to react, it would have to break its double bond, it would lose its aromaticity, it would lose its conjugated cyclic flow of electrons, which is what makes it so stable, right? It doesn't want to do that. It doesn't usually want to react. Okay, so to illustrate this, let's go ahead and compare benzene, which is just a compound with a bunch of double bonds inside it, right? So let's compare this to another double bond compound, an alkene like this. Because if you look at these two, at least at this part right here, these two compounds look exactly the same, right? So you would expect, if you didn't know anything about aromaticity and how it's so stable, you would expect that since these two look so similar, that they would react in exactly the same way, or at least I would. Okay, so if you took this double bond and you react it with an electrophile, like Br2, like we saw back in the day, then this would give us an electrophilic addition reaction. If you remember, the double bond would break, pick up this bromine, kick off the other bromine, and this carbon of the double bond would have picked up that bromine, putting a plus charge there, 
And then you can follow this up by this bromine adding to the other carbon of what used to be the double bond. And this gives you two electrophiles, these two bromines, having added to the carbons of what used to be the double bond. Okay, so we've seen that before. And if you didn't know anything about aromaticity, I'd expect the same thing to happen to this guy. Okay, so hey, if we throw in some Br2, then, you know, if I didn't know anything about aromaticity, I would expect that this double bond would break, just like we saw up here, kick this bromine off. You'd see this bromine attached to this carbon. Positive charge there. Here's the bromine that just got kicked off. Just like we're seeing up here, right? Now this bromine can go in, add to that guy, and do an electrophilic addition, just like we've seen in the past with alkenes. And here we'll have a bromine added to each of the carbons of what used to be this double bond. But hey, what's wrong with this picture, you guys? Why, if you tried to do this, you'd end up with no reaction, and this, it would be okay, you'd get the electrophilic addition? Well, check out what's happening here, you guys. In an aromatic ring, you've got this conjugated cyclic flow of electrons. So in order for this benzene to use one of those double bonds to do an electrophilic addition, it has to give up one of those double bonds that's participating in the conjugated cyclic flow, which makes it aromatic, which makes it stable. You're gonna go from something that's super, super stable to something that's not as stable. And do you ever wanna do that? No, right, you guys? So that's why this is not going to happen. This benzene, he's going to say, you know, I could do an electrophilic addition, but why would I want to do that? I'm already too stable as it is, or I'm already stable on my own as it is. I don't want to have to do that, okay? Uh, as opposed to this case, you know, he's got no aromaticity. He's just got a double bond. He's going to break that, do the electrophilic addition, no problem, okay? So this is what we're talking about when we're saying that benzene is usually too stable to react. It doesn't want to do an electrophilic addition. It doesn't want to break its aromaticity, okay? All right, so let me fill you in on some of the backstory here behind benzene and these EAS reactions. Because for a long time in organic chemistry, people kind of gave up on benzene. They're like, benzene, you know, you're aromatic, you're too stable, we can't get you to react with anything, you're useless. Until they came up with an awesome strategy, right? And here's what they said. They're like, all right, benzene, you know, we understand you don't want to do an electrophilic addition reaction because that means you'll have to lose your double bond, you'll break your aromaticity, you'll become a lot less stable than what you started out with, right? So perfectly understandable. We know why you don't want to do that. But how about this? How about if we get you to react, you know, it will break your double bond, you will lose your aromaticity just for a minute while we stick on this electrophile, but if you allow us to do that, we'll give you your aromaticity back later by the end of the reaction. Okay, so let's say this one more time. They say, hey, benzene, all we want you to do is break your aromaticity just for a minute. You'll lose your double bond. You'll lose your aromaticity while we stick on a bromine electrophile. But we promise to give you back your aromaticity later by the end of the reaction. So right after we stick on that bromine electrophile, then by the end of the reaction, we will give you back your aromaticity. How does that sound? And benzene, you know, he's kind of like a stubborn old man. He doesn't like change. He's like... You know, I don't like the idea of breaking my aromaticity. That doesn't sound very good. But, um, you know, if you promise to give me back my aromaticity later, then, you know, I guess that would be okay. And this is how EAS reactions were born. This is the strategy. Convince benzene to react, break its double bond, lose its aromaticity, as long as you promise to give it back its aromaticity later by the end of the reaction. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down this strategy. All right, so all this is saying is that benzene, this guy, he's usually too stable to react. You try to get this guy to do an electrophilic addition reaction like we did with alkenes with double bonds, he's gonna say, no way, I'm not gonna do that. No reaction, right? But we can convince benzene to react 
lose his aromaticity. Okay, so break the double bond, lose the aromaticity just for a second while we stick on an electrophile. We can convince benzene to do this if we promise to give it back later. Restore his aromaticity later by the end of the reaction, right? And this whole sequence of events is known as an EAS reaction, an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, the topic of today's session. Okay, so don't sweat the mechanism right now. We're not even discussing that. I just want you to get the general idea for what's going on here. To get benzene to react, to get him to add an electrophile, we get him to break his double bond, lose his aromaticity just for a second while we add on an electrophile, and then we say, hey, benzene, don't worry about it. We're going to give you back your aromaticity later, okay? All right, so I've got one more piece of general information to give you guys because all EAS reactions are going to follow the same three-step general mechanism. Okay, so later today we're going to be covering four types of EAS reactions, but all four of those types of EAS reactions are going to follow the exact same three-step general mechanism. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and list out these three steps so we can use them as a guide for the rest of today's session.